I'm building a shipping container house using 24 shipping containers in Michigan. It has been an amazing journey. I enjoy working with professionals from all different trades. The key is to work with the best people in the trades by asking around for references and getting at least three quotes. And be patient and flexible with your schedule because the good companies or craftsmen are always in demand. The crane company, Laramie Crane, did a great job stacking the 24 containers in a day and a half. Since I never built a house before, I'm learning as I go. In this video, I want to share with you the major mistake I made that could have been disastrous, but I worked through it and overcame the huge mistake so the build could go on. After the containers were stacked and welded together, the next step would be to put the floor in and roof on. First went up the floor for the gray room. The craftsman did a great job with it. Then up went the knee walls on which will rest the roof trusses. When the knee walls went up, they looked beautiful, but that was when the craftsman spotted the huge problem. That is the roof trusses were the wrong size. The open space for the gray room is 40 feet by 60 feet. When the knee walls went up, for the trusses to rest on, they added five and a half inches on either side. So the trusses should span 40 feet and 11 inches. But I, when I went to Menards a couple of years prior, telling them I needed trusses spanning at 40 foot space, they said, oh yeah, we have standard 40 foot trusses. They didn't ask to see the architectural drawings and I didn't know better. So the trusses that I was protecting with tarps in the snow were essentially useless. I paid for those trusses more than two years ago before the pandemic prices soared. Now I'd have to pay for new trusses with a price gap of about $10,000. So that was problem number one. I will tell you later how I solved that problem. The second problem was that the floor was now exposed to the elements while we waited for the new trusses. People tell me that the OSBs can be exposed to moisture for weeks or even months without major damage, but I was not taking any chances, so I decided to cover the OSBs with plastic sheeting. Since I worked during the day, I only had the evenings to do the work, and the temperatures were freezing, but I was undaunted and covered the big space with plastic sheeting. Well, I found out that was not a good solution. If you look at these pictures, you can see water underneath the plastic sheeting. It got in there from the edges, the seams, and the tiny holes that the splinters poked through the plastic sheeting. The lesson I've learned now is that plastic sheeting is useless, but I was stubborn and persistent. So I actually tried four different times, placing the thinner plastic sheeting with thicker ones. None of them worked. I worked hard to put them in place, but let me tell you, that was a pure waste of time, effort, and money. Just don't do it. Here you can see me making a lot of effort to blow water off the plastic sheeting, but eventually I had to get rid of all the plastic sheeting. Sometimes I thought I would never put plastic sheeting over the subfloor anymore, but it is just hard to look at all the snow and ice gathering on the subfloor. Yes, I tried it one more time here with thicker black plastic sheeting, 
Yet again, it was a failure. Here's the last try with even thicker plastic sheeting. It didn't work. Eventually, I decided to paint the OSBs. Paint is expensive these days, so I went to a Sherwin Williams store to see if they had any expired paint I could buy. It turns out, as some of you already know, there's a thing called mistint paint, the kind of paint that was tinted wrong at the store. They sold those gallon cans to me for $5 each. Some of these gallon cans would cost about $100 each at the original price. So I would go back to the Sherwin-Williams stores in the area and ask to buy them. One store was so nice that they literally sold me six of them for a dollar each. So this is a shout out for Sherwin-Williams. They're really nice folks. Painting the OSBs was easy. I simply dumped the gallon of paint on the floor and just rolled it all over the floor. I never cared about what color it was as long as it was exterior paint and could hold up for a couple of months while I sorted out the truss issue. I was so happy with the solution that you can hear me butchering singing in the rain in this clip. In the end, the result was a colorful piece of unintended art. Some friends liked it so much that they joked I should sell NFT rights to the floor and make money. One friend suggested that I should build a see-through floor over it to preserve the quote art unquote. All joking aside, I was happy and thought it was an inexpensive solution to a massive problem. Looking back now, quite a few months later, with the roof already on, the paint is still holding up nicely, even with a lot of foot traffic. It was definitely the right thing to do to protect the OSB subfloor. Now back to the financial problem of a $10,000 cost difference between the old trusses and the new trusses. Menards was willing to take the trusses back, but at the original price. You know what I did? I decided to sell the old trusses at the current market price in the open market with a slight discount to the Menards store price. I listed the trusses on Facebook and they were sold in three days. I found out that Facebook is probably the best place to sell odd things because it simply directs the customers who are searching for similar things right to your ad. With Facebook's help, I reduced the cost increase to almost nothing. The buyers were happy because they received perfectly good trusses at a discount for their build. They came, loaded them up on their trailer, and handed me the cash. So a couple months after that, I got the new trusses. The roofers came and started to put a roof over the floor, but the floor was doing just fine. I will have another video out soon for the roofing process. I know a lot of us are building houses on our own, putting a roof over our head, working hard to have a good shelter, and feeling proud of what we have done. This is just my story of trying to work myself out of a problem, digging myself out of a hole that I probably dug myself with other people's help. We just keep on going. Nothing will stop us now.